funny that the connections we have with people still remain even after we've cut ties with them. True, it still remains, but it's not as strong as it once was, but it's still there in the closet, like the boogeyman in the kids' room at night. When life slows down and no one's around, you think, I learned from you. I learned that sometimes I have to turn my feelings off in order to get better, because putting them in the closet won't help, because when I open the door, I have to make sure the boogeyman doesn't get out. See, in all honesty, it doesn't, it's not the boogeyman's job, job to scare the people that see him when he pops out. It's to scare the person that put him there. Society has taught us not to let our true thoughts, actions, and feelings show. So when people see them in their fullness, it's like they've seen a piece of us, leaving us exposed, open, and vulnerable. I guess that's why I made sure I buried all my boogeymen alive, because I knew one day I would have to face them. And the time is now. This poem is called, You Were a Bird, You Are the Sea, and it's based on the Icarus myth, who, as you probably know, is the boy who flew too close to the sun and his wax wings melted and he fell, fell into the sea and drowned. And I'm dedicating it to Darrell today because Darrell is brave and awesome. Thank you. You are a bird, you are the sea. Stretch them wide as God's first breath. From tip to tip, there is no time. Just the rumbling of a tune in your makeshift beak and bright sky galloping through the hollow of bone. Bucket of air, spine built from light, boy full of flutters and drafts. You speak mountain stream, rolling leaf, laurel cloud, the dialect of flight. The world drifts like a madness inside you. Earth, trees, and birds, feathers, wings, and night the start and end of time, rowing through blood's currents, sailing inside the freedom of mind, now split open by a whirlwind of cone, pushed like air through sky's vast lung. When I go, let me go like you, Icarus, past my own limits before I fall. Let me be a flesh-toned streak in the sky, a flash in the blue a sunburst of wonder, rejoining the ripples of sea. Creativity is risk. It's having the strength to lay your fears aside and say, What is sleeping inside me? What greatness? What giant? What vulnerabilities? What beliefs? I want you to think of the last conversation you had before you came here today, whether by text, email, phone, Twitter, smoke signals, or, God forbid, in person. <laughs> think of all the things you said and the ways you said them. You were being creative. But you did them so naturally that you didn't know that you were being creative. As noted by cognitive researchers such as Art Markham, when you used words to speak, you combine sentences that have never been spoken before. You see, we are all already creative. It's our birthright. We just have to agree to wake that giant inside us. Because when it awakens, it will ignite every area of your life. Sometimes it just needs a little nudge. Or an alarm clock by the ear. Or some rocks thrown at the window. Creativity is about courage. And courage is about passion. And passion is about belief and joy. If you want to wake up that giant, ask what it believes and what makes it happy. Because Darrell, your giant can turn boogeymen to dust. Melissa, your giant can fly. Your giant can navigate the sky. When I first started college, I wasn't adventurous or outgoing. I was quiet. I didn't do things that would open doors for my creativity or, or myself. I would purposely show up to class unprepared so I wouldn't be the kid with all the answers. I hid my passions and my gifts to myself so you can say that I was selfish. What sparked me was a professor I had my freshman year who said she saw potential in my writing. This made me the person I am today, active at open mics, hosting poetry events, and inspiring others to express and use their gifts. However, I never would have been in this position if I hadn't done these three things. One, accept the fact that I can be creative, make the decision to be creative. 
Two, know that I can be different and not be a carbon copy of everyone that was already out there. And three, the most scariest thing in the world, face my fears. In short, I believed in myself and my own merit of my own creativity, and this basically is what woke my giant. In my opinion, in order to reach your full potential of your creativeness, you have to, like I said, face your fears, which is what I refer to in the poem, The Boogeyman. The beauty of having people believe in me, as well as my professors, is what allowed me to not get lost in the shuffle of college, much like uh, other black students I started college with my freshman year who felt like that they didn't belong also. Having a professor, my peers, and my family believe in me was empowering, humbling, and exciting all at the same time. This was very instrumental in my growth as a writer, as a student, and a man as a whole. But none of this would have came to fruition if I didn't make the decision to be creative. Decisions. If I were a superhero, I would run faster than the speed of light, see further than the end of time. Unfortunately, I've had to wear these glasses since I was a kid. <laughs> I have a stomach that I can't seem to get rid of that I say just appeared. And people say, you make the decision to be better. So I went and got a gym membership. I haven't been back since they took my picture for my ID card. It's probably on that man's desk still. I say to myself, I get my cardio when I run to my car when my shift's over. I want to be built like Superman. I was going to say the Hulk, but I'm 5'6". Not a good look. Decisions. <laughs> Even the good ones have effects, but still we decide. True, it was Superman who soared high above the clouds, but it was Clark Kent who made the decision to step inside the phone booth. And Bruce Wayne could have moved to the Bahamas, lived his life with an unlimited supply of umbrella drinks, and just stayed on the beach. Decisions. See, Bruce Wayne made the decision to be Batman, and I've got to make the decision to be me. Thank God for Darrell's professor, my colleague, Judy Harris, but also kudos to you, Darrell. Thank for, you. You're welcome <laughs> for listening to her. Sometimes it takes a giant to wake a giant, and sometimes that giant is the self. But whether the call comes from within or without, it always means listening to the voice that says, you can do this. You have something to offer. Because we all have something to offer. Each of you is the only person with your specific DNA, life experience, and perception. And you are the only person who can share with the world your truth. When I was a kid, I used to love to sit high at the top of my jungle gym and watch the neighborhood happenings. I could see into six backyards and four houses. I knew who got along and who was fighting. I knew where cats hid and where dogs hid their bones. I watched swimming pools dug and gardens planted and other kids swinging so high I thought they wanted to marry the sky. I was so in tune with the patterns of our lives I could forecast not only the weather but what time each family would sit down to dinner at night. Then one day something unexpected happened. A man in my neighborhood became enamored with baking muffins. Blueberry, banana nut, jalapeno cheddar, you name it, he baked it. And this once very ordinary, nondescript man, who I'd never even bothered to watch before, became lit with the fire of passion. He was a giant as he stood over his stovetop and his apron and mitts, his face glowing with oven light and infatuation. Kids began to hang around his driveway to watch him bag muffins at the garage work table. Adults stopped by with casseroles, hoping to get muffins in return. And when he went to replace a board and his fence, everyone offered to help. See, it doesn't matter whether you bake muffins, salsa dance, or write. You have a creative force inside of you, a giant, that is something to offer the world. And you should not deny yourself or the world your gift. When we create, regardless of whether our creation is brilliant or not, we brim and we shimmer. We become conduits of magic and we ourselves become gifts to the world. My story is a little different from Durrell's. My giant 
fell asleep and needed to be rewoken. My daughter was young and I was divorced and overworked and basically I was too exhausted to spend time on what I then thought of as a hobby, my writing. It seemed frivolous to me in light of earning a living and changing diapers and keeping a toddler from sticking a fork in a light socket. <laughs> then my daughter fell in love with writing herself. She dictated stories to me to photocopy for show and tell. Soon we were making up stories together and I was lit by writing the same way I'd once seen my neighbor lit with the glory of baking muffins. As much as I'd offered my daughter life, she offered me life too. I realized then that everything I'd given up for her, I could have given to her. And I vowed never to deprive us of myself again. Daughter for Rosalind. Because I was a cave and you were the bird that flew through my hollows, when they bathed the pain away, the light on your face looked like peace after a long and onerous war. I knew then what it meant to conjure fire from two sticks, to be an ocean giving life to a wave, to invent the wheel and its axle, unwind torque, create a perfect language from gurgles and sighs. Your body was a new and sacred space. I was a universe cooling after a great expanse. And because bright cells clung together to be you, I could believe I built the ark that saved humanity. And animals walking two by two, that I'm the one who sat beneath the Bodhi tree and begot the sacred fig of enlightenment. I tell you, Athena sprung from my own split head. Because emergence is a teaching. Because your hands and feet were softer than sand. Because before there were canyons or valleys or lakes or winds, you curled your hand around my finger and with your touch delivered the all. Howard Thurman once said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. When you find that thing for which you feel crazy, over-the-top enthusiasm, whether it's baking muffins or writing poetry, designing computer programs or designing gardens, offer it your belief. And your courage. Because it doesn't matter what it is that makes you come alive, and it is not your place to judge it. What matters is that you find it and let it have its way with you. When you embrace your creativity, you live your life with purpose. When you live your life with purpose, you give the world the greatest gift you have to offer. The gift of your best self. So spread your wings, wake up your giant, dig up your boogeymen, and teach them to dance. Create your life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.